Serial killers have been around throughout history. It has said to be that these were vampires and werewolves to have originated. For a person to be considered as a serial killer, he or she had murdered at least three people and usually accompanied with an abnormal psychological gratification with these murders. Serial killings had been documented as early as the 1800s and the most notorious was the unidentified Jack the Ripper in London. After the 20th century, most of the documented serial killers are from the United States, which are some of the cases and documentaries you're familiar with. I'm sure some of you already heard about John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer, and Ted Bundy, names that still haunt us until today. Unfortunately, Philippines has its own cases of serial killers. On one of my videos I've already talked about was the tragedy in Stepping Hill Hospital in UK, where a Filipino nurse killed his patients in a very sinister manner, therefore acquiring his name as the Devil Nurse. But let's go back to the 1800s, when the first serial killer in the Philippines was documented, Father Juan Severino Malari or Padre Severino. So yeah, he's a priest and yeah, so let's get this shit started. So hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night if you're about to sleep. Hi, my name is Phil and welcome to another segment of Freaky Filipino Friday with Phil. Rawr. Where I talk about weird and freaky stories in my home country, the Philippines. Because we have tons of freaky stuff back there. So today we're going to talk about the first documented serial killer in the Philippines, Padre Severino. What? A priest? And also a killer nurse? What the F is going on here? Well, welcome to the Philippines. It's more fun in the Philippines. Now, let's begin. There was so little information about the life of Father Severino, I couldn't find his childhood you know, documents or the name of his mother or father or any siblings. But documents say he or originated in Makabebe, Pampanga. Yes, Makabebe. In this era, the Philippines was still under the rule of Spain, so Catholic Church was a strong component in the society. And because of this, the priests were given the utmost respect by everyone, well even until now. So Severino took up theological studies at the Pontifical Royal University of Santo Tomas. You know theology, right? You know, of course I know, it's the study of God and uh, godly things. Yeah. So he finished his studies and was ordained as a priest in 1809. Since his ordination, he was transferred from one parish church to another because around that time it was like a kind of a, bit of a battlefield of being a priest. Because back then, being a priest was like a competitive office job. So newly ordained priests had to fight for their place just like how a business system would work. So I imagine like priests back then were like, mean girls just to stay on top yeah today's easter sunday why are you wearing red you're supposed to wear green you can't sit with us but in 1816 he was able to settle in a place called magalang pampanga he was warmly received by the residents the people love him because it was their first time seeing a filipino who is a priest omg we're so glad to have a Filipino priest, like it's a breath of fresh air. No more killings, no more corruptions, no more death, no violence, like ugh. Not only that he was the first Filipino priest in their area, but also he was the second Filipino to learn calligraphy in the country. Like this priest was the total package. Like come on, it's gonna be a wonderful time in our community, right guys? <laughs> My god, he's our savior. Mm -mm. It's just the beginning. Over the span of 10 years, there has been 57 murders that mysteriously happened within this quiet town. There are also people who mysteriously disappeared, like poof. Officials or the Guardia Civil didn't have any suspects or any clear evidences to lead up to answers. Well, of course not. Of course, we, we shouldn't blame the priest like, oh my god, he's like holy and stuff like that. 
But one fateful day in 1826, Father Severino had fallen ill and needed assistance. So he was taken care by a fellow priest. While this fellow priest was roaming around in the residence of uh, Father Severino, like, mm -hmm, I'm just doing my stuff here and poof, he stumbled into something. He found weapons covered in blood. Not only that, mm -mm, not only that, he found belongings who belonged from the townspeople who were missing and were, were and also murdered. Like, oh, it was like, mind blown. The priest did not hesitate to report this to the authorities. He was then imprisoned like any regular prisoner should be and with no special treatments, of course. But he was given trial, of course, to defend himself. Well, according to accounts, the reason that he killed people is that he believed that it was the only way to redeem his mother's soul. And the court was like, um, what do you mean by that? Well, he believed that his mother was bewitched or cursed or in the Filipino term, nakulam. And everyone was like, um, he cray cray. Believe it or not, this trial took 14 years. Yes, 14 freaking years. Finally, he was placed on death row and hanged on 1840. I had to look on this, sorry. Now, another record he broke that he was the first Filipino priest to be hanged. Take note, this was decades before the Gumburza trial. The Gumburza priests were the three priests who fought for equality from the Spanish oppression. So Father Severino was sort of historical, like he was the like, first of something, but didn't end up very well. Well, according to Dr. Luciano Santiago, who is a psychiatrist and also historian like, yeah, he also has the package. He believes that Father Severino was a victim of injustice even though he was like a serial killer. It's because around that time, the Spaniards were the pioneers of mental health. Like, yeah, listen to this one. They were able to build the Hospicio de San Juan, the Philippines' first mental institute. And listen to this again, it had been operating for 15 years. 15 freaking long years. And a lot of people believe Father Severino should have been taken to the mental hospital first, right? The higher authorities should have allowed some psychological tests to assess his mental status at first before putting him in the trial. But no, he was like, you're an Indio. But they assumed that it was like a natural tendency of Filipinos of believing superstitious and uh, spiritual things. And if you ask my opinion, yes. Uh, the Spaniards wanted to maintain power and they needed to scare off the Filipinos and they wanted authority to the Filipinos like we own the ship. So they just put Father Severino into trial and they just killed him off. Whew, this is a bit heavy guys. 300 plus years under the Spanish rule like oh my god. Uh, imagine if you were in those times like oh it's a bit heavy but we're lucky right now like we are independent and stuff like that even though we're like poor and stuff well at least we have freedom sort of now so what are your thoughts guys uh, just comment down on the comment box below if you have anything to say and if you have any suggestions or including information because i couldn't find any information about father Severino. it was just tiny little stuff but you know i couldn't find his actual face or any picture of him i think they tried to erase him but yeah they were at least able to document him so and if you have any suggestions of any like uh, other cases i would gladly research about it and talk about here in my channel and before and before we end please do like my this video of course and subscribe to me and yeah that's pretty much it and just be safe okay wear your mask and have a fun day